Hello, yesterday I did a video called adding icons to the Beaver Builder themes menus. And in that I included how to add social icons to your menu. Now in this video, I want to show a different approach using CSS. And I also wanted to show you how you could do the same using background images instead. So that's what we're going to cover in this video. So to look at where we left off yesterday, we were adding to the WordPress menu snippets directly into those where we could just display our icons. Now the problem with it is it got a little bit messy. If you're looking in the back end here, it's quite tricky to understand what's going on and it just looks a bit of a mess. So I, this approach that I'm going to show you next is the one that I would probably use. It's a bit tidier, but it does require a bit of CSS skill. So I'll go over to a new install and I've already set up a menu where I've added Facebook, Twitter and YouTube and I've done that using custom links. And if I just show you here, you can see that the URL is going to my social network. And unlike yesterday, we're not pasting in a load of snippets into the navigation label uh, and having to get around the problem of screen readers needing to also have that label there as well and it be hidden. This time we're just putting it in directly. I've also added a open link in the new tab and I've also added these two CSS classes over here. Now, if you're not seeing CSS classes, you need to make sure that you're going to screen options and tick that on. But I've added two, one for the individual icon and one which is a more general one I've called Navicon. And I've done exactly the same with Twitter. I've given it its individual one called Twitter and Navicon and the same with YouTube its own unique one called YouTube plus Navicon. So I saved that. So we've not added any CSS style at the moment. So if we go and look at the front end, it's exactly as we would expect. It's just showing links, it's showing those titles that we saw. And what we're trying to do in this video is to hide these and replace them with font awesome icons instead. So let me quickly go over to the Font Awesome library over at fontawesome.io forward slash icons. And I will just select Facebook. And we are looking for this one, not the square one with the background, but just the isolated one. Click on that. And yesterday we were using this snippet here, but in this case, we are actually just going to use this Unicode one. So what we're looking for from Font Awesome is this, the one that's called F09A, and that would be our Facebook one, and we need that in our CSS. So let's get on with a little bit of CSS styling. So I'll bring up my CSS editor and I've already set it up, but I've disabled the styles so I can enable them and show you bit by bit. Let's first start with the individual icons and that Unicode that we needed to add from the Font Awesome library. And let me just turn these on. You're not going to see anything at the moment. You saw some move in there as it made some space for it, but there's no styling on it to actually show them. But this is what we're doing. We are using in what is called a pseudo class in CSS. And what this does is it allows us to add to an element that exists. So this before is a pseudo element and we can use after a way of adding some content to an existing element. In this case, it's the anchor tag or the labels over here. So we're really effectively adding this before. So we add some content, which we're using here to just before the anchor tag. So what's actually happening is there, that's why it budged over a little bit, is the content. And we can't see it because we've got no style in. And this is where we add in those Unicodes. We just need to put them in content, in some quotes, and we need to use the backslash before the F09A. And we need to find the individual ones for our Twitter one and, and for our YouTube there. So let's turn those on there, there, and we haven't got any styling at the moment. And let's go over so we can see those turn those on ah there we are so now we're seeing the icons themselves they budged over slightly onto the text there just because of our styling and the width i've set but what we need to do here again we're using this uh, before and we need to make sure that we've selected the font family of font awesome uh this uh, border radius is just making this round 100 percent. if i remove that it would go square and we've put on a little bit of padding around the um, uh, font itself. Remember, we've got uh, a background a color set on this, and we're also coloring the font itself. 
And I'm displaying this to block um, so to make sure that it takes up all of the space. And when we do uh, round these things, that it remains round. Now, it's a bit fiddly. Let me just put this back on again. It's quite difficult to explain this. But uh, when we're trying to get the sort of size or roundness of this, we're really looking at two things because we're setting the, the width on that icon there. So if I stretch this further, it's going to be wider. But of course, I can adjust this if I want a bigger one by increasing the font size. So we kind of can find around by adjusting these two and if we want the space in between these I'll move on to that next but I think that's all I need to explain on this at the moment I set that to zero that, that doesn't need to be there so I'll remove that and the next thing that we need to do is to make sure that we're removing these labels themselves so they're being hidden and that's what we're doing over here so again this is where we've oh it's just to mention before i move on i've also used as you notice here for the coding i've also used our custom css called navicon to add that to and like i said just to make sure we've really isolated that and i'm doing the same again here when we look at the anchor tags i'm using that custom navicon there and let me just turn this on i need to turn it on like this okay in order to obviously i've stuffed up my but i can i can show you this um in order to get rid of that i've changed the color to transparent on the text that's made it disappear a little bit belt and braces with this because i've also set it to font size zero now if you were watching the first video I was also making text disappear, but I didn't use font size zero. And the reason for that is that there are some browsers out there that set a minimum font size so it could display your font even so. So in actual fact, because I've said it's transparent, we don't need this. I've just put it on in case. And what I've done here with this width is that I've set this. So I've kind of set the width of those pieces of text themselves. So if I just I can see this better, if I turn this off so they're a little bit squashed up let me do yeah, that so you can see so that's just squashed everything of the text up so I can make some space for the icons themselves so if I was to just hide this again I can now create a little bit of space in between the icons so if I wanted bigger icons like this all I would need to do is to start adjusting the font size and and setting the width according to it if I wanted to keep it square and the same size and that is all I can show you on this as I say these examples will be in the blog post so next I will move on to how we can add a background image instead so I've already set up a background image on this example here. I'm using TripAdvisor. This is actually now included in the Font Awesome library, but it didn't used to be, and I used to use this technique to show it. So the first thing we needed to do was to add the image itself to the media library, which I've done over here, and I needed to keep a note of the URL. And this bit is what I need is the WP content uploads TripAdvisor 1 PNG. And then I needed to set up the menus. And just by the same method, I've used a custom link, add in the URL that it's going to, and add in a navigation label of TripAdvisor, and also add in a CSS class, which I've called TA icon. And let's head over to our CSS editor where I've got it set up already. There we are. And all we needed was this bit of code, which again is included in the blog post. And we're just isolating the anchor tag for the menu there. And we are setting the color of the anchor tag itself to transparent. So we're hiding the text itself. Uh, this needs a little bit of adjusting because obviously it's still the, the, uh, the text width. So we can just even though we can't see it, we can adjust it so we can see the icon differently. And there we are, we've added the background image URL and there we are, the forward slash WP content uploads to advisor the thing that we needed before, set the position to relative and made sure that the background image is set to non-repeat. And that pretty much is it. That's how you can add a background image. Sometimes you may have to adjust slightly. But I hope that's useful. I think that really covers what I wanted to do in this video. And I'll talk to you again at the next video. Thanks very much for listening. Bye-bye.